Okay, so when you come to this junction, don't be tempted to go to the right. You want to head to your left. Good morning, folks. It's the 2nd of January. It's the first walk of the new year. And we are currently doing the four, well, the plan is to do the four Western Dromocter Munros, which are actually relatively easy Munros to do. So we're going to hopefully do all of them but a lot will depend on the snowpack and how deep it is up on the plateau Honestly folks, I don't know about you but we've all been sitting through the Christmas holidays waiting for some decent weather sitting tight, sitting tight it's been rain, rain, rain and then finally, two days before going back to work and we've got this Super bus already Well, we've been going an hour and 10 minutes now and we're just approaching it's like a false summit you see it from the road it's got a cairn at the top and you can quite believe it'd be the summit but it's not the true summit is just a little bit further back so don't fall for it and you can see behind me here the views are fair opening up as well that I believe will be the Monalia this one just in front of us here that is the Fara. It's a massive corbett that. These Munros have a terrible reputation for being rounded and boring lumps. So this is why I'd save them in winter. Because look at this. It's fantastic. I don't know, it's like walking on a, a winter tundra. Nice one. <laughs> right, that's us at the summit of Gale Carn. That took roughly an hour and a half. Not bad at all. Now, it's well worth your while to drop down a little bit. Look at the views of Loch Ericht and the Ben Alder range. It is absolutely stunning. There you go, folks. Loch Ericht. You got Ben Alder there right in the centre. You've got Carn Lear. I don't know if the camera can make out, but you've got the big massive mount here, which is Gale Carn as well. It is a beast of a mountain. But the main attraction has to be Ben Alder there. And you've got Ben Voyle to your left here. Seriously remote in there, fantastic. Well, that was rather nice, I just uh, startled a mountain here there and it's full winter coat as well Nice! Right folks, that's us reached the call between the two Munros Now it's a pull up here, up onto the ridge and I believe the summit is probably just this one here Okay folks, we 
we're just approaching Munro number two. It's been a bit of a slog up that slope. I haven't really done any filming. But uh, that wind's picking up as well, it's Baltic. Well that took 3 hours and 50 minutes to get up to the summit. So uh, we're pretty much halfway around. Two more rows still to do. And it's just after 12, so there should be enough daylight. What I'm doing just now is going over a little bit and having a look. You can see the A9 snaking its way north and south. Right, after the lunch stop, we're heading off to do Munro number three now. However, this wind in the face is really brutal. Like, it's a bit of a schoolboy error. We should have done these in clockwise. Is it clockwise? Anti clockwise. We would have had the wind on our backs. Hey ho, it is what it is. Just need to push on. Right, so this is us heading up Munro number three now. Met a bunch of skiers, saying it's perfect conditions. Kev's got his goggles on. There's your skis. Okay folks, we've been going just over four hours and we're just about to approach Munro number three. However, it's got a little bit claggy. Our summit is just up there somewhere. Munro number three. Right, well that is Ben Udale, I think it's pronounced, in the bag. One more to go and it is, what's the time Greg, half one? Half one, not bad. Three hours, well, just less than three hours daily, eh? Shame we've lost the views though. We'll see what happens in this last one. No hanging about folks, that's us heading off for the fourth and final Munro of the day and this one is the jewel in the Dramopter crown, it's by far the nicest out of all seven. So we've got four on the west side of the A9 and three on the east side. And this one's got a beautiful, nice, graceful quarry you can actually see from the A9, so let's push on. The skiers are out in force today anyway. Loads of them actually outnumbering the walkers. Well this is a bit mental, we're all falling about. You can barely see the horizon. I've been down, Greg's went twice. <laughs> well we've veered off course just ever so slightly. Just overshot the mark a little bit. We should have headed east a little bit sooner. So now we're going over this deep snow where nobody's really been. No fresh footprints to follow. Every mile in winter is two. I don't even know if the camera can pick Ricky out. But he's up ahead there and he's doing a sterling job of trail breaking here. He's as fit as a fiddle. So, so close to the summit 
I need to watch because I don't want to end up over the quarry but it's a proper pea super, look at that absolutely no views at all could be anywhere hard going as well by the way oh yeah dancer I can see the summit trig point not far at all there it is phew get in that was tough that was tough eh very tough aye it was hard going <laughs> hard going in the snow deep snow I'm going to have some sodding loaf get that energy reserve back up but first I'm going to make some yellow snow I am busting <laughs> Okay folks, the sun has just set a few moments ago so it's going to get pretty dark pretty quickly so I'm going to wrap this up now but what I'll do is I'll put the stats for the full route up now and if you watched this far, thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one, cheers! Oh,